One of Britain's greatest artists, Barbara Hepworth, is a household name. Yet incredibly, Tate Britain is holding the first major show of her work in London for almost half a century. The first room of the exhibition does something quite remarkable because it places Hepworth in the context of her peers. And the idea here is that Hepworth wasn't the only modernist concerned with this notion of direct carving. Instead of modelling in clay, ready to cast something in bronze, they were using their hands with chisels to actually create the works of art. Hepworth said the job of the sculptor was to release the life of the material and show its essential qualities of shape, colour, surface and grain. I love it when you're walking through an exhibition and you come into a new gallery and you feel a tingle, a thrill. And that's what I got here, where they've gathered together these gorgeous, wonderful, wooden, hollowed out sculptures that Hepworth created in the 40s. Now by this point, she was living in Cornwall and a lot of these works were inspired by her engagement with the landscape. You see that in these curling forms, as though areas and headlands of the bay are moving in upon themselves. And they also include one of her most famous works of art of all, Pelagos, which is Greek for the sea. There's often with Hepworth's art a calmness and a gentleness, a kind of equilibrium. And it's something that we see in her earlier figurative work, reflected in the way that she often did mother and children as a theme. Even in the 30s, after she's moved into abstraction, we find that that personal sense of maternity still is writ large in the work. This is a sculpture called Three Forms, made of marble in 1935. And there's a lot of speculation that the fact there were three of them was inspired by the birth the previous year of Hepworth's triplets two girls and a boy. I think what she did um, was to refine a very pure abstract language, to sort of try to bring sculptural form down to its most pure elements, if you like. So you see her you know, reducing the human figure to an almost totally abstract single form, representing a kind of humanist ideal, but in abstract terms, rather than simply just in figurative terms. I think one of the real strengths of the exhibition is that, quite pointedly, it refuses to consider Hepworth's work in the context of the sculptures of Henry Moore, the giant, the colossus of British art with whom she's always compared, often to her detriment, over the decades, time and time again. In this case, though, quite refreshingly, Hepworth's work is allowed to breathe on its own terms. Barbara Hepworth's Sculpture for a Modern World is at Tate Britain until the 25th of October 2015.